Hey, Donald Miller, Donald Miller Electrical Services. So I spent a lot of time at this other rewire, um, the one on the other side of the main line, and I didn't get any time to look at a treat we have here, especially the architect is famous for the Philadelphia area because he designed the art museum. He also employed the first African-American architect out of Penn School of Architecture, Julian Abel. So this is a Horace Trumbauer house, all right? Horace Trumbauer, like I said, designed the art museum. He was into very big, boxy structures. And this isn't my first Horace Trumbauer. This is actually my third. But they're, they're very, he uses like a square, more like a rectangle in like a very large fashion to accent his architecture. So we're gonna walk the house. It's an awesome property. Here's the main foyer. And as you can see, the railing is a really nice oak or mahogany railing. It's hard to tell, but it goes all the way up. Just gorgeous, okay? So we're gonna go into the great room, okay? We have plaster dental. So this is all plaster crown molding. It's not wood, which always makes a rewire fun. All right, and just lots of windows, all right. This house was built in the early 1920s, okay. So if you look at the time period for Horace Trumbauer in the 1920s, Julian Abel had a lot of influence on his designs. So this house most likely was basically ran by Julian Abel or Abel, one or the other, all right. So this is the great room. Beautiful crown. So what makes another thing that makes this house special is the gas lanterns still are operational. So the house was wired with electric and gas. All right, so. So here's the main entrance. And right in the main foyer, you'll have the rear entrance as well. All right, and it, it was put together with a bunch of three-way switches. Here's their dining room. All right, beautiful medallion, some nice wainscoting throughout. And these are the gas lanterns. Still operational, okay. Now if I take this off, let me see if I can take one of these off. There we go, I might be able to, there we go, I can loosen this one. A little bit more, it's worth it. See if I can pull it from the top. So check that out. That's the wick for the gas. All right, now this is old, it doesn't work anymore. All right, let's see if I can. And there's the gas pipe work. Pretty cool, huh? There's the valve. There's the valve for the gas. So let's put that back on. Tighten this guy back up a little bit. All right. And, you know, the fabric inside of here is the same fabric used for camp lighting today. So that's cool. There we go. We'll just cover these back up. All right. And yes, they have them on both sides. And. 
It's an old antique gas fireplace. Pretty cool, huh? Humphreys Radiant Fire. All right, so let's go through. We have the dining room. So the house had porches on both sides. The, this side porch. Steam heat, and it still has the original steam. All right. This way. All windows. Just beautiful sun porch. So let's go through here. We do have a small addition that was added. The addition was added in the early 1900s. So let's go through here and check this out. This is cool. An old fashioned built in safe. So a lot of these older homes that were built before the 1920s had safes because the, the homeowner didn't want to go to the bank. You know, you had the Gold Confiscation Act happening at this time period. Government banking system wasn't exactly trusted. Right, so we have the kitchen. This does have a uh, butler's house attached to it. That's the back here. This is the butler's office. All right. Small, nice little office here. But what I'll, I'll, I'll show you a system. So part of a steam system with the heat. There's some really cool things about this house. And I'm gonna show you one of them. So the heating system was a series of radiators that had chutes installed. I'm gonna show you what a chute is. Hopefully the lights work down here. Cause that's really what I'm gonna need is some light to work. Um, especially because I don't have, here we go. Let me see if I can get over to here. And there we go. Now we have some light. All right, so this is a radiator um, chute. Inside here is a square radiator. They're, they're actually like discs, okay? And as the steam heat goes through it, it heats the radiator up. This allows you to draft cold air from the floor. It goes up this chute, you open it up, and it creates a chimney for the radiator to take hot air upstairs. Pretty cool. Here's another one right here. Now, I'll see if I can find one that's open so you guys can see what the radiators look like because it's impressive. Let's see if I can make that work. No, I can't make that one work. Let's see if I can... Uh, uh, let me see if there's one over here. No, not over there. Well, they're little round discs. That's all. We're going to go upstairs. And we'll, we'll start checking out other areas of the home. I might be able to show you inside one of the radiators over here. And that's the box right below us. And you have those big grates. So that's the heating system. Steam heat's highly efficient. It gets very warm. Oftentimes the pipes are wrapped in asbestos. They did remove the asbestos on this one. So let's go up the butler staircase. So the butler had a back staircase. And 
they utilized every little square space they could here. I know it's a little dark here, but you pull that down and it goes in for about two feet. Silverware, any type of storage. So in the butler portion of the home, which it was sectioned off. If you look, this is the main staircase going up. And then this would be the butler section. So the butler in this house had a living room. This would be most likely their living area. All right. And they would have a bathroom here. This was also, if the butler was also no par, they would be taking care of the children in this room. And that's why it's as large as it is. The bedroom is upstairs. So we go up the butler staircase again to get to the upper level. And again, it's a very narrow staircase. They have a skylight up top. And here we go into the back area of the home. Almost like an English Tudor style with the, the round top doors. And this would be the butler's bedroom. Very nice, simple, but nice. All right, all the original woodwork. Butler bathroom. All right. And now we're on the third floor, main foyer, looking down. All right. Now this is the main section of the home. So this would be one of uh, the children's rooms. We have a Jack and Jill bathroom, large bathroom. All right. Now we make our way over to another bedroom. All right. We go down the second floor, and we already saw the butler area. So we'll check out the master bedroom and make our way back downstairs. All right. So we're going into the master bedroom. It's a very large, sorry. It's a very large master bedroom. They have gas lanterns again on both sides of the fireplace. All right, fireplaces are operational. So this is the closet in the master bedroom. And this is cool about this closet. It has a little porch. So, very nice. There's your backyard. They, they actually have another house attached to this. Not attached, but their garage has technically another apartment above that. So, again, more staff to live here. So the master bedroom, again, is attached to a Jack and Jill. That goes into another fireplace room. And this one, again, has another porch. This door is a little tricky, so we're not going to... Yeah, we're not... So, but there's the porch. The house originally had two porches, one on this side covered and one on that side covered. And what happened was some damage to the house occurred due to a tree and a storm. And they removed the top side of the porch on this side. And I believe the other side porch is nothing more than just, let me go look. I don't know what they did over here, if they did away with it or not. Yeah, it looks like they did away with it, but, all right. 
So beautiful doorways. Like, this is a solid wall though. This is one of the, the load bearing walls. So they just did paneling inside the doorways. We have French doors going into either a second floor parlor room or the second floor bedroom, depending on how many family members there were here. So Horace Trumbauer was known for building homes for the wealthy. Um, his education was somewhat minimal, but his work was amazing. So he's a little bit of a rock star for the Philadelphia area. Um, he did not receive the credit that was due. They did not like the art museum when it was first built. It was considered a junkyard on the hill and it didn't become what it's known for today until later on in life. But this house is awesome. It's going to take us five weeks to rewire the home. Um, the, the framing is pretty much the same. I've done another one of Horace Trumbauer's house over on Cooperstown Road in Haverford Township. And the difficulties with that one was in his main foyer, the same style of design, very big, sym symmetrical to the center, oval center. And the difficulty of that rewire was he did all his knob and tube and pipe work. So in order to rewire that house, we had to figure out how he ran his pipe work and then we could rewire it. But um, this one's a cool home. So God bless. Thanks for watching. Enjoy your Wednesday.